This is a 2021 Chevrolet Camaro that I sold on uh, Saturday over the phone. And how it went down, basically, a customer came in. She was looking at the Camaro. She wanted the basic model. So this is an LT. It's the four-cylinder turbo. It has the automatic transmission. This particular one has the RS package, uh, which is nice. It's the RS, which gives you, um, you know, the darker tinted taillights. It gives you the black bow ties. It has the nice 20-inch wheels. So it's a, it's a very good-looking car. Uh, you know, she wanted to lease it. And in leasing it, because this is a 2021, it was more expensive than the 2020 model, uh, which actually I had a 2020 model at one of my other locations. So it was a little bit of a tough situation because she wanted to see that 2020 at the other location. And a lot of times when that happens, you know, a customer will leave me, they'll go to another store and look at a car and, you know, a lot of times they end up just buying it there, you know? So this customer said that, uh, you know, they wanted to deal with me, they were gonna come back to me, but they really wanted to go there and look at it. So this all took place on Thursday. They left me, they went over to the other store, they looked at it, they drove it, and then we told each other, we'll talk Friday morning. And sure enough, Friday morning, she called right up. She said, we looked at it, we drove it, I like it a lot, I wanna come down and I wanna put the deal together. So we set up an appointment for later that evening, around like 4.35 o'clock, and uh, they came in and we did just that. We put the deal together. Now we priced up the 2020, we also priced up this one for them, the 2021, uh, you know, because we had it. So listen, if you can go into a 2021, they like the wheels on this one better, you know, maybe maybe we can make a deal. But it was about $50 a month more for the 2021 than the 2020. Now, to be fair, the 2020 was not an RS package like this one is. Other than that, they were identical. So we put the deal together on the, the one in my location. I took a deposit, wrote up everything, and they left. And then at that point, it's our job to go, you know, contact that dealer and bring the vehicle in. And therein lied the problem. Can you fill it regular 6065? <laughs> So we write everything up, the customer leaves. I hand the whole folder to my sales manager who's gonna give it to our inventory manager to go get the vehicle. You know, granted, she just drove this vehicle Thursday night, it was there, we're good to go, right? So he comes back to me in like five minutes and says, guess what? I was like, what? They swapped it to another store. They needed something from another store and that dealership in return wanted this Camaro. So they did it for their sold client. Uh, so now I did a search and they don't exist. There's like nothing left out there in our area that matched that equipment level. So the only option I had was to go with this one, which was the 2021, but this one was like $50 a month more. So we basically sat down, we reworked the numbers on the lease and we got this 2021 model to be within $20 of what they were gonna pay on the 2020. So she's getting a newer car, she's getting the 20 inch wheels with the RS package and she's only paying $20 more a month than what it would have been for the uh, for the 2020. So she's happy. I just have to get this through the shop for a pre-delivery inspection, uh, get it detailed and they'll be taking this home with them today. No What's up, bud? What's up? Get a couple of leases figured out. Okay. This is not an emergency, but I want to get it to this guy you know, within an hour or so. We are on three different vehicles. Any horses? Uh, yes. Bear with me one second. We need 10k miles, first only. And then let me ask you a question on this bolt. Did we apply that New Jersey 5000 to the lease? No. He's going to have to get it back and wait for it. Right. All right. Those are the three vehicles. What else is going on here? I'm really playing catch up. This is what Monday mornings are all about playing catch up. Kind of following up with everybody, everything that you did last week on Saturday, stuff like that. I got a couple things in the works. I have one deal that I'm trying to negotiate, uh, and, and we have nowhere to go. Sal already gave us the best numbers. Uh, you know, we gave them extra on their trade when they were here. We came down in the payment when they were here. So we're now we're just waiting, but I have nothing left to tell them as far as pricing. So the situation with this one was there was a Maven involved. Now a Maven is the person who's basically helping the buyer buy the car. And in the 15 years I'm doing this, I've seen it so many times where the Maven actually gets in the way of a customer making a deal because they push too hard. They're constantly trying, constantly trying, constantly trying to get more money off even after you tell them no. And uh, you know, at, at a certain point, you have to stop negotiating and just say, okay, now it's time to make a decision if you want to buy it or not. Uh, so with the conversations we had the other day, they left, and I've been kind of chasing them ever since. 
just constantly coming back. You know, I'm sorry I tried again. There's nothing else I can do. Are you still considering the deal? So uh, they are still considering the deal. They did just ask for more money in their trade, which we can't do. Uh, so now I'm waiting one more time to see what they say. Are you going back to Honda? All right. It actually looks like my customer did just email me back, and um, they're gonna they're gonna you know think about it and let me know. It says shortly, so hopefully before the end of the day. I really hope I can put that deal together because I'm having a bit of a slow month, and I really need every deal I can get. I also have this Silverado sold. I just have to check and see if the bed liner was installed yet. Uh, it was not. So we have a bed liner on order for this truck that we're gonna have installed. Uh, this truck is going on Friday, so we have that all uh, scheduled and ready to go. And then that puts me at 10 for the month. Only 10 cars sold, which is really not great at all. And I've only talked to 24 customers this month. It's funny, I think like the month got a little slower and we also now back to full staff of eight salespeople. There's seven, seven or eight salespeople. So it's, it's like there's more people here, there's less traffic coming in, which means we're all selling a little bit less than we normally would. But I still have the rest of the week to, uh, to maximize and, and get as many units as we can. Do you have a uh, plate? I've got a test drive uh, Suburban. This truck was actually right in the middle of being certified. It was in the shop, but it's drivable. So they can take a look, see what they think. And then if they decide they want to move forward, we run it up, we take a deposit, and we'll finish the certification. They could pick it up in a couple days. Uh, I'm on V1302. Uh, While they're out there driving, I'm basically just updating everything in our computer system with their license and all that sort of stuff. This way I'm ready to go when they get back. And uh, when they get back, we'll answer questions. We'll see what they think. My customer showed up on this vehicle and uh, it was actually literally in the middle of being certified. The technician was working on it when they got here, but he wasn't doing anything that we couldn't just kind of interrupt him for a second to uh, bring the vehicle up front and let them drive it. One of the cool things I think about selling a vehicle before it's actually certified is the customer gets to see exactly what it's like as it was traded into us. So in this case, the truck is relatively clean other than a little bit of sand in the back. Uh, you know, just from maybe beach chairs and stuff like that, and a little bit of dust on the dashboard, uh, you know, presented pretty well considering we haven't detailed it or really done anything to it yet. So we explained the whole process on what we're going to do with the, um, you know, with the certification. They're going to think about it. This was actually their first time looking at a Suburban and the first time they've experienced a Suburban. They do have a couple more they want to look at. Uh, I'm not worried about pricing. We're very competitive. I explained we only have the one dealer fee, our documentation fee. We include all the certification. You're just adding, you know, tax and plates to it if you decide to buy it. So we'll see what they say. They're going to, they're going to, you know, go about their day, look at a couple more and uh, we have all their information so we can follow up and hopefully, um, you know, they give us a call and they decide they want to move to the next step uh, because they did not bring their trade with them. So we would have to have them come back anyway so we can appraise their trade and actually put, you know, real numbers together so they know exactly where they where they stand. Just to give you a real quick glimpse, uh, as you can see, the interior is pretty clean. Carpets aren't that bad. You know, seats look good. They were actually fixing the one seat here in the back. Uh, there's a portion of the leather that's getting fixed. But, uh, you know, this truck presented pretty well considering, again, we haven't detailed it. We haven't done anything to it uh at all really and uh it was like i said in the middle of uh being certified here in the shop that's where the sand was underneath here but uh well that would be cleaned out completely we'll run it through the shop it'll get whatever it needs whether it be tires brakes you know whatever and uh it'll be on the lot probably by wednesday
All right, folks, we're going on a quick road trip over to a customer's house. Uh, last week, I think it was Thursday, we did a, um, a contactless vehicle purchase. So a customer of mine bought a car from us back in 2013. It's a 2013 Chevrolet Impala. This car only has 17,000, like 200 miles on it. The family really doesn't use the car anymore. They wanted to sell it, but because of COVID, they weren't looking to go out of the house and they weren't looking to come down. So on Thursday, we drove over, uh, my used car manager and myself, to, uh, to look at it, appraise it, and um, you know give them a value on it. They decided to move forward, so they uh, we, we went back with all the paperwork and uh, dropped it in their mail slot. They signed everything up. We took everything back to the store along with the car, and now I have the check. I'm just gonna drop that check over at their house now, drop it in the mail slot. So this is just one of the you know many things you try to do to help people out, especially in the times that we're in, uh, because you know they're a little concerned with COVID and, and you know not wanting to go out and, and do any kind of what they consider is unnecessary type, uh, unnecessary type business. So uh, I'm glad we can help them out. It's gonna drop that off, head back to the dealership, make sure my Camaro got the pre-delivery inspection done because that should be done by now where we can detail that car. And then uh, check my email and see if my other client ever responded back with, uh, with the vehicle that they're looking at, which is a Chevy Equinox. All in all, it's been a pretty busy Monday, just doing a lot of little uh, logistic type stuff and uh, follow up and you know all sorts of car related dealership life Mission accomplished, we just dropped it off and I just noticed that this house right here is for sale. So I'm curious what it uh, what it sold for, it's under contract right now. I'm gonna go on Zillow when I get back to the dealership and just see how much that house goes for. Uh, what do you think? Drop it down in the comments, just uh, put your guess and at the end of this video, I'll give you the amount. To give you a little bit more information on this house, this is a five bedroom, four bathroom house, 5,200 square feet. It's actually a lot bigger than it looks from the, from the, from the street. Absolutely beautiful house. It's a pretty penny. Well, that was just a busy couple hours you know it's so funny when i try to do these little vlogs throughout the day and you get sidetracked with just one client after another after another that you really can't focus on doing any kind of video footage so i drove back from my uh, my customer's house dropping that check off and i had a customer waiting for me we we're looking at silverado so we talked about that and priced up a diesel ltz that we have uh, when he left, I had another customer that was, it wasn't my customer, but a, a customer for the store that was waiting. So I started helping him out um, on this Tahoe that he came to see. He likes it. However, it's a little more than he wants to spend. So I don't, we're probably like, like $100 a month in the payment more. So we're five to $6,000, uh, you know, off where he wants to be. Now this is a DRAC car or what we call a DRAC car. It's one of our dealer like rental cars or loaner cars. Uh, this has 3,914 miles on it, as you can see there. And basically, uh, you can buy this car. Window sticker was was 60, 65, I think. We're selling it for 56.8 minus the rebates, which are $6,500 right now. So it's a tremendous deal. It's a great value uh, to buy it with only 3,900 miles on it for that price. Uh, he wanted to lease it, which you can no longer lease it because it's a 2019. And like I said, the finance payments were just a little bit more than he wanted to spend. 
Uh, while he was here, my Camaro customers came in. So we ended up getting that car delivered and down the road. And now I'm just trying to catch up with some voicemails and some stuff like that. Um, yeah, it just like the day just flew on by. I don't even know what time it is. It's 6.30, we close in an hour. So I have an hour to uh, basically finish up the day and see, uh, see if I can get anything ready for Wednesday, which will be the next day that I'm here. Tomorrow I'm actually gonna go to motor vehicle and try to get this motorcycle endorsement. So I'm gonna get there at like probably 4 35 o'clock in the morning, uh, set up camp, get a number, and then once you get that number, it guarantees that you'll get serviced that day, and then hopefully I can just knock this out because I don't see it, you know, I, I don't see the lines getting any lower anytime soon. So I might as well just go get it over with and uh and get that endorsement on my license, which I'm pretty excited about. As you can see here, uh, the lot has filled in a lot. The lot has filled in a lot. You can tell I had a long day. Uh, we had a Tahoe High Country there I was gonna make a video about, but it just got swapped out. We got some Silverados. We filled this in with traverses and blazers, a couple of bolts. So inventory starting to come in, which is good. I think that's all I really have to say today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed today's little uh, video. As always, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, anything about the car business, just put it in the comments below. I'd be happy to answer them and uh, start some conversations. Otherwise, have yourself a, uh, a great night. So who guessed it, was anybody close?